okay yeah uh, we've started so we were in james chapter 2 yeah then i told how uh james is encouraging the believers to treat everybody equal now from verse 5 he says listen my beloved brethren has god not chosen the poor of this world to be rich in faith and heirs of the kingdom which he promised to those who love him verse 6 but you have dishonored the poor man do not the rich oppress you and drag you into the courts uh, i'll go ahead and read till verse 9 verse 7 do not do they not blaspheme that noble name by which you are called if you really fulfill the royal law according to the scripture you shall love your neighbor as yourself you shall do well but if you show partiality you commit sin and are convicted by the law as transgressors so he is talking to the uh, the people and he is telling them that you know the rich are blessed you know they generally like you know people might look at them and say hey they are blessed because they have everything that they need but looking at the poor he is making these statements and he's saying that just like the rich even the poor are blessed by god he says has god not chosen the poor of this world to be rich in faith does it mean that only the poor can be rich in faith no that's not how we must interpret it because if that is the case then god is showing partiality to the poor but god does not have any partiality and he does not want either the rich to receive preferential treatment or the poor to receive preferential treatment and thereby what god is saying through james is that just uh, um, you know the 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 rich are chosen by god to have faith similarly the poor are also chosen by god to have faith the rich are heirs of the kingdom meaning the rich believers are the heirs of the kingdom even the poor believers are heirs of the kingdom so in this manner god has equal uh, um way of treating people and that should be the same case and now he adds and he says is it not the uh, uh you have dishonored the poor man with partiality but think about the rich who oppress you and drag you into the courts now again this should not be understood as all rich people are like that no but the oppressive rich or the uh, rich person who is exploiting the poor person now such a one has done evil to the poor man uh, and so you know he is saying why i maybe in the in the church at that time the poor the the rich whether they did the right thing or the wrong thing they were being treated well because they were rich and james wanted to change that and that is why he is addressing the uh, rich person okay so it's very clear we have understood about you know partiality and uh, uh you know uh, doing the right thing and also notice that he refers to something as the royal law which is to love your neighbor as yourself okay as jesus also taught you know which are the commandments that one should keep then jesus said okay Uh, the main two commandments that i want to talk to you about is love the lord your god with all your heart with all your um, you know strength with all your mind and love your neighbor as yourself so this is a key commandment which is what even james is talking about as the royal law if you do this if you are motivated by love then you know you will end up doing the right thing coming to verse 10 here so he says for whoever shall keep the whole law and yet stumble in one point he is guilty of all for he who said do not commit adultery also said do not murder now if you do not commit adultery but you do murder you have become a transgressor of the law so speak and so do as those who will be judged by the law of liberty for judgment is without mercy to the one who has shown no mercy mercy triumphs over judgment so he's just helping them 
understand about the grace of God here. Now, remember, I told you section by section, uh, thought by thought, you know, James is instructing the believers. So here he's talking about the law, the whole law. What is the whole law? We know that Moses gave the Ten Commandments. And then there were also you know, different laws that had to do with the, the way God's people uh, need to live. So he's covering all this and he's calling it the whole law. And specifically, you know, he points here and he says, you see, when you look at the Ten Commandments, there are Ten Commandments. What if you keep one and you break the other? You are still not good enough because you have not kept the whole commandment or you have not kept the whole law. So, he says that if such a thing happens, uh, you know, why should God still continue to be gracious to us? Because we have not kept the whole law. But then, God is the one who has given us mercy, um, though we don't deserve it, okay? Though we are not perfect, He has given us mercy. And that is the way in which... You know, God has shown his grace to us. He says, mercy triumphs over judgment. So God's mercy has triumphed over his judgment. So what comes within the mercy? Jesus Christ, his redemptive work, you know, him uh, giving us the blessings of the cross. So all that is the mercy. But actually, who are we? We know, you know, Romans 5, 8, we know, while we were still sinners, Christ Jesus died for us. So that is our original uh, uh, position. We were sinners. But thank God for his mercy. God did not say, okay, punish them, kill them, or, you know, uh, put, push them away into eternal darkness. No. God's mercy has saved us. So mercy triumphs over judgment. And in the same way, James wants the people also to extend grace and mercy to those who are actually needing judgment okay so uh, yeah so that's that's the thought which is given over here now coming to verse 14 from verse 14 to verse 19 you know, there is a different thought about faith and also about works so what does he say here he says what does it profit my brethren if someone says he has faith but does not have works can faith save him if a brother or sister is naked and destitute of daily food and one of you says to them, depart in peace, be warmed and filled, but you do not give them the things which are needed for the body, what does it profit? Thus, also faith by itself, if it does not have works, is dead. But someone will say, you have faith and I have works. Show me your faith without your works and I will show you my faith by my works you believe that there is one god you do well even the demons believe and tremble so james is simply saying that believing is a step but acting on the belief is how you complete your walk with god so taking one step of believing is very important but if you leave it at that then Faith will not be complete. It has to be accompanied by action. So if you want to uh, look at it this way, when we have a coin, what happens? There is uh, something imprinted on one side and then there is something imprinted on the other side. We never see a coin on which you have only one side you know, which has an image. Similarly, when it comes to our faith, faith must have actions. If there's only faith, no use. Only believing doesn't help. Only actions doesn't help. There's got to be faith as well as action. So that's why, you know, he's asking uh, this kind of a rhetorical question. He says, some some say, you know, I, I, I you have faith, but I have works. Will, is that good enough? No, that's not how the kingdom of God works. So put action to the faith now let's say i if i'm believing god that i'm going to be blessed in my workplace then i have to work hard without working if i just say i'm praying i'm praying i will be blessed in my work where is the action if you believe that you're going to be blessed in your work put in the work 
okay similarly when we are ministering to people if we say that oh this brother is struggling so much i really care for this brother so i'm only going to pray i'll only pray 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 but what if god has given you something that you can use to bless that person let's say something as simple as you have some time and this brother is in the hospital you can just go visit the brother there isn't it to show that care to show that affection maybe that will make a big difference in that brother's life so put action to the faith no generally you know we have uh, usually uh, after service and i'm just sharing this with you because some of you will be pastors also after service people will come they'll say okay pastor pray for me i don't have a job or pastor pray for me my father is sick pastor pray for me you know i'm struggling financially so what one thing is we can pray for them we can ask for the release of the gifts of the spirit prophesy over them ask for miracles to take place in their lives all that's great but always think is there anything else i can do for this person maybe a visit okay oh your father is sick okay let us see what we can do you could probably send somebody from your church if you can't go you're very busy you can tell uh, one of the leaders and say hey can you pay a visit just go meet this person in the hospital and uh, come back you can ask the this uh, brother is it okay can somebody come to the hospital if they say yes just take down their number and send somebody it will be a blessing to them now if somebody says you know brother it is winter time i don't have money to buy clothes we hear their need and we pray for them and we say let god provide you with the clothes and send them back but instead of just leaving it at that you know what if you could do something maybe somebody uh, that we know or we ourselves have some extra clothes how about we put it in a bag and write a note you know me praying for you uh, i hope this is a blessing to you and just give them practically give them maybe two shirts or a blanket or something what happens there is faith but there is also action and that is the way we are we are um you know showing that we are believers we believe and we do so both have to go hand in hand so it's very practical what james is saying is so practical he's saying come on if you say you're a believer show it so that's the way in which we must live out our christian life and in verse 19 you know uh, he is saying it and it's sort of it really pricks your heart he says you believe that there is one god you do well even the demons believe and tremble so he says look at the demons they also believe that there is one god so it's like he's saying what is the difference between you and you know uh demons that are evil in nature if you say you believe even they believe but just believing is not sufficient believe and acting on our faith is what is very very crucial was 20 he says again about faith and action little more he adds to it but do you want to know a foolish man that faith without works is dead now he gives examples of people who were noted for their faith but they also had action who are these people was 21 was not abraham our father justified by works when he offered isaac his son on the altar do you see that faith was working together with his works and by works faith was made perfect and the scripture was fulfilled which says Abraham believed God and it was accounted to him for righteousness and he was called the friend of God you see then that a man is justified by works and not by only so he is taking Abraham as an example and we know that Abraham is a friend of God Abraham walked with faith you know he left his place and he went where God was showing him it takes courage it takes faith to do things like this but also it's not that abraham just carried faith in his heart his actions were in line with his faith okay so what happens you know abraham when it comes to uh, uh sacrificing his son isaac he says okay god you know i will do it all in the morning he wakes up he takes his son and he goes to the mountain to make a sacrifice now just 
think together with me if abraham did not believe that his son can be raised from the dead then how would why would he sacrifice but we know that abraham believed that god could even raise his son from the dead and so what was his action when god said okay abraham you go you sacrifice your son he was willing to go because he knew that god is capable his faith in god was so much that he believed that god is even able to raise up isaac from the dead so what was his action ready to sacrifice so there is an action to the faith when god told abraham come you know i will take you to a better land he went action imagine if abraham just sat in his place and said okay god give me two confirmation give me three confirmation give me four confirmation we will not have the testimonies which we have today about abraham's journey about isaac being born and about god taking them to the promised land somebody moved based on god's word so action has to accompany faith if there is no action then what is he saying he is putting it bluntly faith without works is dead you can't say that you have faith because where is the action show me if you have faith show me the action so abraham is a good example one more example he is going to talk about verse 25 he says likewise was not rahab the harlot also justified by works when she received the messengers and sent them out another way was 26 for as the body without the spirit is dead so faith without works is also dead so basically he's saying you know when you look at rahab why did he choose the example of rahab rahab is a person who is a gentile she's also a woman who at the time you know in the jewish culture was women were not given much priority so their social position was somewhat low so she's a gentile first of all and she is a woman and then she is a sinful woman she's a harlot or she's a prostitute so all these things put her in a very difficult uh, position and you know when we consider somebody like this we might wonder how can they uh, be blessed how can their lives uh, move forward how can you know god lead them into victory but even such a person we know that she hid the spies you know when you study about joshua sending the spies um you know she she did an action of faith uh, and and uh, you know she demonstrated her faith in the living god at that time and that action because of that action the spies tell her okay you know when the walls of jericho come crumbling down nothing will happen to you you and your family will be saved so her faith in god translated into her action of protecting the uh, the spies and that led to god protecting her and not just that so we later read that she comes in the genealogy of jesus so god blessed her abundantly and somebody who is so far away from god is blessed in god in christ in even in the genealogy of jesus christ so it just shows us what god can do when he sees faith accompanied by action so there is an encouragement for the believers to step out if you have faith show it if you believe that god is going to um you know anoint you bless your ministry take some action do something you know go out step out and you will see the fruit manifest okay so now let's just move on to act, um james chapter 3 here so different subjects you know so far we have seen um something to do with treating everybody equal we have seen how um faith is important but action is also equally important we have seen how one should be joyful in difficulties trials tribulations uh, we have seen the importance of perseverance patience character hope 
okay we've um, seen the source of temptation we've talked about the wisdom that god is able to give when we ask him for wisdom so these are all the um, uh, different subjects that james has touched upon now coming to chapter 3 there are some subjects which he is going to address over here let's see what they are so starting from verse 1 he says my brethren let not many of you become teachers knowing that we shall receive a stricter judgment for we all stumble in many things if any one does not stumble in word he is a perfect man able also to bridle the whole body so he's talking about the higher standards for teachers of god's word so why was james talking about this we don't know maybe there were people who taught the word but did not follow the word and that's why earlier he also talked about faith and actions if you say you believe show me your faith now look specifically to somebody who teaches god's word he says that we will receive a stricter judgment which means we are accountable to god and to the people to whom we minister um and god is going to hold us accountable so what should be the right not just teaching but also the way of life jesus taught us this in matthew chapter 5 and verse 19 jesus said uh, if anyone uh, breaks one of the least of these commandments and teaches men so shall be called least in the kingdom of heaven but whoever does and teaches them he shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven so two things jesus was addressing one is inaccurate teaching so when we teach false things or we don't teach the truth of god's word rightly divided god will hold us accountable because what happens the wrong teaching will translate into wrong application in people's lives and there are consequences to that or results outcome to uh, what people end up doing so right teaching is so important then another thing is whoever does and teaches so when we say that we are a teacher of the word it's so important to first live it out to first do it then teach it then it makes a difference but without our experience of overcoming or without our experience of going through something or without our experience of living out the word of god when we teach that's uh, that's not right okay so that's what he says so teachers are held at a higher standard and we must maintain that in our own personal life practice first practice then preach you know you would have heard that uh, you practice before you preach so teachers should have higher standard of um, living right with god then verse 2 he says for we all stumble in many things if anyone does not stumble in word he is a perfect man again you see earlier he said listen listen more you talk less to be quick to hear and slow to speak now talking about the words there uh, there his emphasis was self control control the words that come out of your mouth again in verse 2 he says anyone does not stumble in word if we are able to control the tongue control the words that come out of our mouth he's saying such a person is a perfect man perfect man it's not that they are perfect and ready to go to heaven that's not what it means it simply means that this person is mature they are mature they know what to speak when to speak how to speak it so it's a sign of maturity okay to be able to control our words and we are told that such a person is able to bridle the whole body or there is a sense of self control they already they have developed themselves in self control no wonder they are also able to control their tongue now coming to verse 3 verse 3 to verse 6 the importance of the tongue is what is spoken of here so verse 3 he says indeed 
we put bits in horses mouths that they may obey us and we turn their whole body look also at ships although they are so large and are driven by fierce winds they are turned by a very small rudder wherever the pilot desires even so the tongue is a little member and boasts great things see how great a forest a little fire kindles and the tongue is a fire a world of iniquity the tongue is so set among our members that it defiles the whole body and sets on fire the course of nature and it is set on fire by hell so he is making a comparison of the tongue with bits in horses mouths so if you have seen horses that are trained and are controlled by horsemen um usually there is something put in their mouth which is called as a bit so when they they uh, they kind of move it then the horse understands what it needs to do whether it needs to turn a certain direction or go fast so with that bit they control the horse so the uh, the movement of the horse is controlled by the bit similarly for a ship you know when we look at a ship anyone who has seen a uh, even an ordinary ship it's quite huge but the direction of the ship is controlled by a rudder which again is a uh, a smaller instrument as compared to the size of the ship so we are told that even the small things can control the entire operation of uh, a a creature or um you know a um, a a vessel or an equipment or uh, some process so you see how that small object is very important and controls everything you know these days i'll just give you another small uh, example um, all of us you know we have electricity in our homes and we have a main switch board right so uh, maybe you have just a ground floor house or you have an up what you have um, first floor second floor usually what happens there is one switch okay which if you switch that off then everything maybe those, all the three houses will lose their light but it will be a very tiny switch you just have to switch it off and it's all gone the tongue is like that you know the tongue is so small it's a tiny member of our body but it has an impact on the entire body entire person that is the understanding so he also says you know a little fire take a little spark of fire it can burn up the whole forest so something which is little has such a huge impact and that is the tongue for you so about the tongue he talks about an evil tongue and he says the verse 6 and the tongue is a fire a world of iniquity or it is sinful an evil tongue is sinful the tongue is so set among our members that it defiles the whole body so an evil tongue what does it do it the entire person is defiled by the evil tongue and sets on fire the course of nature or the uh, way things have to move in our lives that also is affected by the words that we speak remember proverbs 1821 where we read that life and death is in the power of our tongue so if we if we want to choose life god has made it possible for us through the words that we speak you know we can choose the right words and that will produce life but if we speak evil words if we speak negative words words which are not in line with what god is saying then you know it is leading us in the wrong direction so be careful about the words of our mouth and that is what he is talking about here coming to verse 7 he says for every kind of beast and bird of reptile and creature of the sea is tamed and has been tamed by mankind isn't that amazing um in genesis god said i'm creating man is made in my image once he created man he said okay you go you subdue everything 
you know you have dominion over everything you rule and reign use your authority so what has man been able to do man has been able to harness man has been able to understand and engage with the things in the world when we look at so many plants are there but man through knowledge people have named the plants people know how to make use of whether a fruit or a leaf or something so there is uh, a, a you would say able to utilize able to utilize the benefits of plants similarly when it comes to the animals birds you know by god's grace you know god has given that ability to man that man knows how to tame or bring under control or bring under sub his own subjection even the birds even the reptiles even the creatures right so many creatures are there even, the other day i saw um a video in which there is a lion okay and the lion is tamed it is tamed and it is playing with some of the visitors who have come to see the lion and it's you know the way you you uh, have small puppies cuddling up to you it's a huge lion but that lion is really you know cuddling like a small puppy and i was wondering oh how they have trained this lion that the lion does not even realize what power and what capacity it has okay so that is the capacity of man that man is able to control these great creatures and even creation when you look at uh, so many aspects of creation man is able to control many things so what is the point the point is all these great things in nature we are able to control what about the tongue you know it's after all it's a small little member of our bodies but man is struggling so much to control the tongue you know people struggle to control their anger people struggle to control you know um, uh, themselves from engaging in gossip they say oh i can't help it you know it just happened i didn't mean to do it but i said it i'm so sorry i didn't mean it i i didn't mean what i said you know have you heard that why why didn't you mean what you said because there's no control on the tongue what i want to say that i'm not saying but everything else is coming out of my mouth so that shows that man has not tamed the most important member of his body which is the tongue but out there you know he's controlling lions and animals and snakes and creatures and everything else so basically james is saying come on you know i'm sure we can also control the tongue so verse said but no man can tame the tongue it is an unruly evil full of deadly poison does it mean that you can't tame it no that's not the point he's saying it's very difficult it's very difficult to train oneself in the words that come out of our mouth in word verse 9 he says with it we bless god our god and father and with it we curse men who have been made in the similitude of god isn't that so true even for us as we are maturing in christ we know that what he's saying is very real because it's possible that we went to church and we sang all the nice uh, praise songs and worship songs but the moment we came out of church we came home you know a rude word to a family member or an insensitive word to uh, somebody in traffic it's happened it's happened to all of us so he's saying come on this is the reality we bless our god and father and with it we curse men in traffic you know all kinds of words come out of believers mouths so he's saying we have to take charge of the tongue it's a small member but tame the tongue okay or take control of the words that come out of our mouth verse 10 out of the same mouth proceed blessing and cursing my brethren these things ought not to be so so he's telling them please let it let it be one thing speak the word speak the truth speak blessing speak life with the uh, tongue which god has given us 
and then he just to encourage them again he uses another comparison he says does a spring send forth fresh water and bitter from the same opening no usually when there is a single source uh, this the taste of that water is a certain way here where we live um, we have some sources of water and people will easily tell you they'll say oh this is drinking water this is from that river it's so sweet so there's never have i heard people say that this water is not tasty because it's coming from the same river all these years so there is only one way or one one um, characteristic of the water from that source it's good it's clean it's sweet the water so he's saying when you recognize a source and you are able to tell that there's only one kind of water that comes from there how can it be that from the mouth good words also come you know words of cursing and uh, evil speaking gossip slander all those things also come it should not be the case verse 12 can a fig tree my brethren again trying to help them understand giving another example can a fig tree my brethren bear olives or a grape vine bear figs no so for that what is the thing heart should be clean Okay, heart should be filled with uh, the word of God. You know, Colossians says, "Be richly, richly have the word of God in your heart." Then what will come out? Word will come out. Blessings will come out. Goodness will come out. So, yeah, uh, he says, "Thus no spring yields both salt water and fresh." So let it not be the case if we are saying that we have um, God in us, we are believers, we are filled with the word of God. Let it come out of your mouth. Okay, let it not be the other way. It's so sad, right? That um, uh, believers are okay to behave differently on a Sunday and behave differently on the other days of the week. So James is addressing all these issues, and he's saying, "How can you? Isn't it the same thing that we have God's word in us all the time, and only that has to come out of our mouth also? So uh, cannot mix up." blessing and cursing should only be uh, what is in line with god's word now let's move on verse 13 here he's talking about wisdom okay god's wisdom so uh, what we'll do is we'll read the entire uh, section together then it will be easy to explain yeah so from verse 13 to 18 i will read he says who is wise and understanding among you so this is a different topic till now tongue he talked about the tongue now he is talking about wisdom verse 13 who is wise and understanding among you let him show by good conduct that his works are done in the meekness of wisdom but if you have bitter envy and self seeking in your hearts do not boast and lie against the truth this wisdom does not descend from above but is earthly sensual demonic for where envy and self seeking exist confusion and every evil thing are there but the wisdom that is from above is first pure then peaceable gentle willing to yield full of mercy and good fruits without partiality and without hypocrisy now the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace by those who make peace so again you know some standards of godly living uh, one is to have god's wisdom uh, and what does god's wisdom look like in the life of a believer very simple he says if there is anybody who claims to be wise and understanding or in other words mature if you claim to be mature then it should show in the behavior so he says let him show by good conduct now i cannot say that i am mature you know i am mature i am so experienced in the lord i am all i am saying it with my words but that is not the evidence of my maturity where is the evidence of my maturity conduct good conduct good lifestyle good behavior that is what will show my maturity so again action we say 
words are important but show me with your actions we say faith is there show me with your actions so anyone who claims to be mature be wise and understanding must show in their conduct and works done in the meekness of wisdom so beautiful isn't it so there is a word which is associated here with wisdom what is that word meekness what is meekness you know meekness is gentleness meekness is submission to you know and of course over here we know it is submission to god meekness is humility so with wisdom we have humility which goes hand in hand so whenever we say okay here is a mature individual what are some things that we will observe good behavior good conduct and also humility right humility which is demonstrated through their lives he says meekness of wisdom walking with humility then now in contrast to that or opposite to that he talks about maturity humility what is opposite immaturity and um selfishness humility opposite being selfish or self seeking so he says how does the opposite look verse 14 but if you have bitter envy and self seeking in your hearts do not boast and lie against the truth envy will be there selfishness will be there self seeking will be there so we could even uh talk about doing ministry but why are you doing ministry remember we have talked about it the motives of the heart are very very important i can do small things with the right motive and big things with the right motive i can also do small things with the wrong motive i can do big things with the wrong motive as well so ultimately motive is important i can be doing good things but what if you know just i'll tell you for example let's say um, i'm helping the poor people i am running many programs where we are giving food to the poor but then at the end of it you know we take all these photos and this and that why because we want to show everybody see i'm doing good work see nobody has done i have provided you know all these things uh, my ministry is so good where is the humility in wisdom in that but ultimately what's coming out self promotion so is it a good thing to give food to the poor to help the poor yes but what is the motivation i want to promote myself i want to show everybody that hey look at me you know i'm such a generous person i'm such a great person i'm such a helping person helping you know natured person so it is self seeking it's not meekness of wisdom but there is self seeking and he points out other qualities here is there's bitter envy maybe just giving an example i'm giving food to the poor and all okay it's a needy time and i'm blessing the poor people but maybe in my heart i have bitter envy towards others and i feel who has done such a work nobody has done you know no government no ngo no uh, a pastor in the city or no ministry in the city has done let me show you so i am i want to be number one and i have competition spirit of competition so bitter we i'm also jealous oh last time that church did good things now this time let me show i am going to do great things but what is happening the motivation is not correct so this is what james is talking about he's saying come on you know let's not be selfish because true wisdom is not going to be like this we are calling this wisdom you know we are calling this uh, from god but what is this is from the earth this is from the flesh he also says demonic which means influenced by satan so such things will not bring glory to god and verse 16 he says where envy and self seeking exist confusion and every evil thing are there so stay away from selfishness because when we are motivated by selfishness what can you expect 
he says confusion will come evil things will come because what am i thinking i'm thinking how can i be popular how can i be rich how can i be comfortable how can i be you know um, noted as a great person among the believers so then what happens i will end up doing wrong things i will end up you know having a lot of confusion maybe i will not treat people who are working with me well so there will be confusion there will be all kinds of evil things maybe stealing speaking evil of others so many things that you know you don't uh, you are aware of therefore stay away from being self centered self seeking envious instead of that what should we do verse 17 he says but the wisdom that is from above now coming back to original what we were saying wisdom from heaven what does it have good behavior good conduct it also has humility now few more things let's look at few more things uh, which are a quality of this kind of wisdom it is pure okay, pure means we know you no know, god is untainted he's holy even god's wisdom is like that it's very pure it 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 doesn't come with anything evil in it so godly wisdom is very pure it is peaceable peaceable again you know something like uh, meekness and humility it's peaceable it wants to create peace it wants to release god's peace it is gentle okay that is i can understand that willing to yield or somebody who is walking with wisdom they will be humble if we say okay brother you have a very brilliant idea but how about this time we use somebody else's idea the person with wisdom will say that's fine no problem i am not going to fight and say no my idea is better you have to take my idea you know instead a person with true wisdom will be willing to yield or they'll say it's fine i submit to you you are the people who are organizing the program you do it whichever way you want to do it i just gave my idea doesn't matter anybody's idea you can take so you see it's coming out in the behavior it is willing to yield it is full of mercy and good fruits okay meaning again um the outcome will be good glorifying god uh, and it it will have mercy or compassion in it without partiality without hypocrisy you see these are all double standards partiality hypocrisy but true wisdom will not have any of this verse 18 now the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace by those who make peace so again he emphasizes how it's important uh, uh that things be done with peace uh and you know lay aside all selfishness envy bitterness all the works of the flesh instead walk in the spirit and demonstrate what godly wisdom looks like okay so with this we come to the end of chapter 3 we have only two more chapters to go through next week and you know we uh, surely can complete it uh, well in time all right so let's pray and close now i uh, just want to request uh, either kannan or uh, prince prince uh, would you be please able to uh, would you be able to lead us in prayer yes sir sure. thank you lord thank you that you help us to uh, hear what that uh, is a very very interesting and it really in our life that is everything there is no possibility in your work sometime we met facility but give us the wisdom and knowledge so that we can uh, use uh, we can serve to others and the believers lord thank you i submit all things in your hand the rest of the day in your hand in jesus name i pray amen 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 thank you thank so you. much uh, pray god bless you okay we we'll meet next uh, week then take care thank you yeah thank you